So you can see how, how I'm going about trying to resolve issues, right? And that's the same process. This is what we come across every day. We try to do something, the team doesn't work out. We have to now find a way around it. All right. So now um, let's go back. I've upgraded the WSL. So let's go back to check the version. Look at how we check the version earlier. So I'll go back and say WSL minus L minus V. So the version did not change. Okay, so I'm not quite sure why the version has not changed. Um, set. Okay, let's go to the set version again. I see WXL, WXL. Data set version. I just two. So they're saying that there's no distribution with the search name. So Ubuntu. There's no description with such name. All right. Something is distribution version. Change the version of this by distribution. Terminate the specified distribution. And we start distribution. Okay, so okay, like for now, let's just go and take a look at this. So I will not spend much time trying to. So that is okay. All right, so we have our own visual environment here. We created the visual environment previously. Okay. So let's see how we can activate the visual environment. So we'll say um, source bin source. Okay, so let's see. And so another thing we can also do, like right now, we have to go. That's why you need to get to this flask. I'll see, I'll just come in and say flask documentation. Okay. So I'll just say installation. I'm interested in the visual environments. Okay. So let me try this first of all now. If it doesn't work, then dots. Okay. So it's complaining. So which means this is not well set up. So just to avoid us, you know, spending too much time on this. So. I'm going to go back to Jitbash. Okay, because well, that one is probably well set up here in this system. So I will go there. But well, I'm going to come back to this one. Okay. So I've created the Flux application, simple Flux application. And so we're going to build this project right to the end. Okay. We're going to build this project right to the end. So what we're going to do is uh, All right, so we're going to um, do the project called Flasky. Okay, very simple project. And we are following the book as a guide. We're following this book as a guide. Okay, these two books. So this is the one that I'm going to follow as a guide. Then this one is the one that is like your own assignment. So you go and study this book and try to build what they have here. Okay, so you just follow the code. That just basically is being able, because this one will not teach you your ability. Try to help you to understand how to follow code, how to learn and build stuff. Okay, all right, and then so 
also I've also mentioned that um this is a kind of simple design of our website we are going to build and we're going to use flax to build it. So your understanding of this thing we are doing now will help you to be able to contribute to it. Okay. So this one, this one, nobody's going to teach you anything here. So you just go and pick up a particular attack. Maybe you want to do this particular, you just do it. So nobody's going to say you have to do this one. And then when you do it, it will reflect on your GitHub. And when you are doing an interview, you show that you have done something and you show. So yeah, but this is the learning we are now doing now. So that you'll be able to pick up a task and work on. Okay. All right, so let's go back to this. Okay, let's let's go back to this. Okay, so I've built I want to build a simple application that will help us go through. We have already done most of this, right, in our previous class. So we have already done stuff. So today we're just going to move a step further. But again, I'm now building the thing afresh again so that we can take from here and then keep going. Okay. So again, the first thing when you want to build a, a, a Python application is to create a virtual environment. So I'll do that again. Python, okay. Uh, Anos, um, BMV. VM. Okay, that's the command, but this one can be anything. You can call it VM as well, so, or you can call it anything, okay? So I'll just be the, create the virtual environment. Uh, we can see your screen, sir. Hey, uh, I thought my screen is visible. What's happening? Okay, I'm going to share now. So can you see my screen now? Yes, please. Okay. All right, so yeah, I've created a virtual environment. So the next thing I'm gonna do the usual way is to activate the virtual environment. So I'll do VM scripts and then do dot activate. Okay, then once I'm done that, I'll come back. Remember what showed that you have created a virtual environment that you have something name of virtual environment, which is this and parentheses like this. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to create. So today we're going to be looking at template, but let's let's just create uh, again. I'll come here and do touch app. Sorry. Sorry, you said what makes one to know that you have created virtual elements is what parentheses? Is this then the name of the thing that you have activated it? Oh. Okay, yeah, okay. The name of the virtual environment in parentheses at the beginning of your terminal like this. Okay. So before now we have created a Flask application and then what we did, remember I said from Flask. So the first thing we need to do, because nothing is inside the virtual environment. So if I want to check whether I've installed anything, so I'll say pip freeze. Let's see, it's gonna give me empty. It's not nothing. Okay. So let's see. So it's not showing me anything. So I need to first of all install Flask. So I'll say uh, pip install Flask. So yeah, so Flask comes with other things because it's a framework. Uh, so it comes with other things that help you to build the application. Okay, that's why you have all these other things. So if I now do pip freeze now, it's going to show me all the things that I've installed. Just by just saying only flask. So do I install only flask? But there are some. It depends on other things. So those are why you have all that. Is this is the thing that I installed? Okay. So yeah, I can I say from flask? So flask import flask. Okay. So again, we want to build the flask application. This is why we have 
Now, you can also build an application, web application with that flask, just using normal Python, but that one will take a lot of time. I'll send you a video where I've done that simple stuff, just to say hello, flask. You see how many lines of code, maybe up to 15 lines of code. Why, if you want to do that with flask, it may take you like three lines of code. So that's why Flax helps us to quickly build a web application. Okay, so we we'll have that from Flax in both Then the next thing you need to do is you build an instance of the application, Flax application. So just what you're just saying is that this is application, this file you are in, this is Flax application, that's just it. Okay, again, remember the tax of a, a backend developer or backend program, just basically to listen to request. Now, this request, we are listening to the request to the, uh, the home page and then send a response. So also the div index. Okay, the response is a view function. So uh, how do you need a view function? Because you have this one on top, in this case, in the case of Flask, okay? Or a view function is just a function that handles requests and generate a response. Okay, so here we're just we're just going to generate a response, which is just a normal uh, HTML. You know? I'll just say how I come. We have done this before. Okay. So let's run the application now. Just do flash one. Now I want you see this debug mode is off. Okay. But let's just see. I'll just follow the link here and try to open that. You can see welcome to Flask. Okay, this. Yeah, but today we want to look at what they call templates. Okay, today we're going to look at templates. So I'll just call here and call it templates. So I'll put in a code like this. Like it, it's just a call, like it call, it's called a doc string. Okay, so you just talk about what you have inside a Python file. So I'm going to be making use of it a lot. Okay, Python file. So it's just description of what you have there. So it can be more than a line. Just a description. So we can put that. So today we're talking about templates. Okay. Um. So what are templates? Okay. So in any Python application, remember I showed you something. In Python application, let me go back to this diagram. Okay, remember this diagram, and I said the basic idea of client server application is just basically a request is made and then server responds to that request. Okay, but in detail, this is what actually what happened. So somebody visited the browser and a hit, like the way we have done now, visited, and then a request is sent to the web server, which is now the, this is the whole of the Flux application. Now, Flux are taking care of this for us. Okay, so that is a HTTP server that handles that request directly. And then it will pass that request to the appropriate view function that we created in Python. Now the view function will look at this and then generate some template, which just some HTML CSS, what will be shown on the web browser. So this was, this was, this is the guy that will send it. Now, if you require some data from database, you go to the database and fetch those data and then put inside the template and then send it to what? To the browser. Okay, so but what we have done here, our template here is just one line to say welcome to Flask. And we do not take anything from anywhere. Too. So the task of Python now actually is to manipulate some database stuff. Uh, and then that is what we call business logic. Okay. Business logic is basically the logic that actually makes the app what it is. Okay. In the terms of let's say you have you develop an application that transfer money, the logic that be able to visit the bank. Take the bank and all of that. We see the, uh, go to, when you put your PIN or put your uh, card number, the logic that is involved in going to your bank, checking whether you have money, making the payments and all of that. You don't see all those logic. You don't see something selling and say, oh, payment processing. When you ever see payment processing, know that there's some things being, competition being taken place in the back end. Okay. But front end now, they will not show you something so that you know see that oh, nothing is happening. They will just show you something internally. Okay, so these are the things that we are much more interested in here. Now, the front end now, which is what we call the presentation logic. So whenever they are, you are sending money, they say payment processing. Okay, they will present to you a what they call a loader. Okay, that is loading, and then a test that says payment processing. That is a presentation. Okay, now, but the main logic is taking on the background, going to the bank, checking things, checking whether you have money in your account, there's money in your account, 
being able to access the account, withdraw the money, A, and all of that. Okay, those are the back end goals. Now, in software development, we try as much as possible not to mix up both of them. So that's we're going to see an example of all of that inside this function. Going to be that, doing that. For example, I can say something like this. Uh, uh, I can say uh, person. Okay. I create a dictionary. Okay. Name. Remember, this is a Python dictionary. Okay. Have location, have hot, then I have gender. Okay. So, one thing I can do here, I can, okay, let's say I want to include all of this inside. So, you remember we have this in Python where you can then include stuff okay so i can come here and okay as i uh, you see it's a string once i just remove take the point to the next line they take the quote closing quote to the next line it gives me an error you can't do that if you want to be able to continue a string on the next line after pressing enter okay you need to put triple quote like this okay you can see the error has gone so now I can now say, um, maybe I'll say, H. okay. So I'll just say P. And inside the P, I'll put a strong. Now, again, this is just HTML. Strong to make it bold, okay. I'll say name. Here I'll put person dot name. Can I do that? Okay, let us do this first. Uh, I'll do dot name. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Okay, so I'll take this again um, for location and gender. Okay, so I'll just say location, person, location, and then gender. This is a part of dictionary, so it works. So, so again, because if I go and refresh our page here, nothing is going to happen because the change has not been affected yet. And that is, it's not affected because we set, offset this. if you look at the way we ran this that first time, see that, uh, okay, it's not showing. Well, let me just, let me just run it again, cancel and run it again. So if I do flags run, you're going to see the debug mode to be off. Okay. So, and that's why if you make changes, you change will not But if you do that now, you can see now all of that has reflected. In fact, um, I need to give you some space here so that it will make more sense. Okay, but then this again do not reflect. It's issuing that normal, those things. So what I'm gonna do, I'll kill it. So if you want to be able to, you don't want to be repeating this, killing and coming up, killing and coming up. One thing you can do is, in fact, what you should do is, you can, okay, one way you can do that, set that, you can say export uh, flask debug and set it to one, okay? Now, watch carefully. Now, when I run the same thing now, it's gonna tell me that the debug is now on. Can see the bug is active. The bug is active now. Okay. So if I make any change now, it's going to change. Going to reflect. I don't need to run that. So you can see you have all of this 
together, which is not a good idea. Yeah, where you have the presentation logic. So look at the data, and this is where the business logic is coming from. Okay, you are mixing up the data and all of that inside your view function. So this can be very, very confusing, and it can be make code very, very complex. Imagine building a whole web page inside here. It looks very, very uh, confusing. Okay, so that's why we have templates. Okay, that's why we make your one called templates where. We want to separate the business logic from the presentation logic. Okay. So what we are going to do here is we need to import to so use template now. We need to import render template. Okay. And then so I'm going to create another stuff here. So but the other one is running. We are still in the visual environment. So what you need to do, you need to create a folder called templates. Okay, folder call it templates. And inside the folder, I want to create a HTML file. So that's why we separate, we want to separate the HTML file from the Python file. Okay, so you can see now the templates are this HTML. So I'm going to quickly spin up a HTML file here. So you can see our HTML. You can see our HTML there, right? So flask. Okay, and then I come here and say introduction, personal details. Okay, and then the personal detail. Remember how I've written it there. I have strong say name. Somehow, somehow I have to put. The name here, and then the same thing for location. Location and gender. Okay, but in the case of when you have to put it separately from HTML like this, you know that you are not using it's not Python where we use this F string and put that, so it's way different. So first of all, I'm going to remove the whole of this right now. This is how we do it now. So we do render templates. That HTML, because we created the HTML inside the folder content template. So Flask will understand, we know how to find it. Just put it here. Now, what we can do now here, we can put the person. So I'll just call it user. Okay. Equals person. So this is now how you get something, data from somewhere, pass it to the templates before it's being rendered on the template, right? So I'll uh, now pass it as user. So if I want to see this on the templates now, I have to come to the templates. How do I access it? I have to come here and put this double, look at it now, we put double brackets like this, okay? And then say person, come here and do person, no, not, not person because we are using as user. We say user. So let's see what can what will happen here. User name. I'll come here and do. Okay, let's let's try that first and refresh. Okay, you can see the name is there. This one is not really filled up yet. Okay, we will now have personal details. So if I I come here again, I do user. Uh, what is the question? And then here is that rent agenda. Go the Python dictionary. So if you remember how you use the dictionary, so that's just what we have here. Okay. Well, now we're done using the templates. You can see everything now sorted. So you can see what we have been explaining that we have. So typically, what will happen here is that you would want to come up with the database to get data. Yeah, I'm a Yeah, I'm a Yeah, I'm a Yeah, I'm a Yeah, I'm Yeah, 
All right. So you can see how we have simplified the code. So this one is way more easier. And then in this case now, front end people can actually go and be working on this. Okay. For instance, now I can actually come here and put, remember where we used to put our style. Okay. Put our style. I can say uh, for the H1, I can put the background color, uh, maybe crimson. And then test color, sorry, test color, which is just color um, white. Remember, let me use this other one. So if I have F, 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 that's white. Okay. So when you come here and refresh, you can see that very sure. So front end people can actually design this, design look very nice and all of that. Okay. In fact, let's, let's just try and do something here. So I'm going to even do. Uh, test align say center. So um, here, in fact, uh, I can come here and put all of this in the div. Also make it look nice, and then say for the class details. Okay, and then come here and do. So you can see now the front end people are going to be able to just watch do this and then make it look nice as nice as possible. Okay, I'll just say say the test align center. So okay, um, I can say uh, border one pixel uh, dashed and then in color. Uh, can you see? Okay, this is color free. So I come here. Uh, dashed solid. Okay, let's see. Something's wrong. Oh, sorry. Okay, so not put in value. Okay, um, it's there, but it's not showing. So let's let me just put it black. Okay, and see, and then with uh, forty percent, uh, can see. All right, so. So the test align now is inside. Again, you can see now the test align now is inside. I've reduced the width. So if I want to move this now, if I want to move the whole of this, I can actually even come here and say, um, so I can move this in here. Uh, remove this and say body test align. So basically just align everything inside the body, put in the center. Okay, um, so, okay, so, all right, so, okay, you know, no more. I think the best thing for me to know that a couple of ways to align stuff, right? So I can use margin auto zero, okay. Okay, that aligns this so and all of that. Okay, so if I now want to align this one, the center, okay, body, and then this is usually so you try things and then it's not necessarily working as you expected. Okay, so you're going to see that you just have to just keep. Looking at different ways of okay, let me say uh top bottom. Okay, so so zero or two. Um okay, this is not working now. 
but yeah, but what I'm what I what I'm trying to bring out here is that you can actually work with CSS. Okay. You can actually, well, let me just put this on the center so that it will look a little bit nicer. Test align. Sorry. Not that one. Um, so it will be in the center of the box. Um, cut. Let's see. Look at here. Okay. Cut. Maybe I can put this to Okay, at least this is not bad. Okay, but we have a lot of spaces here, but no problem. So, but what I, the point I'm just trying to bring out here is that um, you can see that a, a front end person can work on this because you're only just to serve it. And if you need some data from the database, you are going to provide those data so that they can use as these are the placeholders. Okay, the data can enter here. Okay, so they can basically just you can just basically give them this and they design it as they wish. Okay, but you know that the data is the same. That's the one thing about the back end. That it's the same back end data, but the front end can change many times. Because as you can see, for instance, Facebook, Facebook has changed many times, but it's just the front end that has been changing. Okay, you see entire details, you see entire pictures, all the functionalities are basically just the same, mostly the same. Okay, which means the back end does not change much for the front end, and that is why the more reason why. They seem, to, they seem to have more front end rules than back end rules. Okay, Richard. Yes, I have a question. Um, so what linked the app.by to the index? You know, in style, in a style in CSS and HTML, we use the the link, mm -hmm. the real link. To link both of them that is working, but in this case now, what linked both of them? Oh, so secondly, yeah. mm -hmm. secondly, why did we use double curly brackets? Do we weren't using that dictionary in the earlier on? We use double curly brackets. Oh, okay, so yeah, is there, do you have more? Is there another question, or should I just go and answer? Go ahead, please. Go okay, ahead. so how does well, what links it? Okay, so in Python, in in uh, flat you follow a certain pattern. Okay, uh, the linking is done automatically once you create a folder called templates inside the app directory. Okay, create folder called templates, and then any HTML put here can be accessed by this guy. Okay, and how to access this by this guy? Just import. Render templates, right? There's a function called render template that you just need to pass the name of that template, which is what HTML dot in this of HTML. Okay. For instance, if I want to create another, if I want to create another page, right, another response, right, I can just come here and say dots root, okay, and then maybe another one to say about, okay, I need to just come here and do Dave about page. Okay, the function so I can call it in the render. And that template again about another template. So you put the name of template which is about dot h. Although it doesn't exist yet. Okay, so this one I'm not passing any data yet. So if I want this to work now, I just need to come here, right, and create. I just need to come here and create a file in about. About page. Okay. In manual, please. Move to the server, please. Okay. What is it? It's muted. What is happening? Ask to mute. Okay. Ask to unmute. Okay, it's muted now. Okay, so 
here I cannot say H1 about web development with Python. Okay, so as long as I create this HTML template and put it here, I can get access to it. So if I can go, if I go to the browser now, I go to about, okay, slash about. See that, just easy. So that's how it's being linked, okay? That's how you can see that a HTML. But it's not, there's not a clear separation, okay? Because when you're building an app, an app can contain several files that can be quite complicated if you don't put things in order, if you don't arrange things well, okay? So you need to start to design your code such that, now, right now, you can see that here, we don't bother ourselves with the HTML as we did that first time, okay? That's the essence of using templates. Okay, we don't bother ourselves too much with HTML. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so, okay, so the second one now. Uh, how do you, sorry? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. So, the second question now, uh, how, why do we use this now? Now, this is actually uh, in, in, in this is actually a different language now. Now, once you pass, this is not you remember this is this is our Python code. Python is .htm. But how do you now get access to this data that you have in Python? How do you send it? So you pass it through render template. Like if I have data in Python, I put in data te render template because I have this person data. You can high put it. I say user is equal to person template. Okay. So this is now user. It's a variable user. So I put user there so that I cannot go to this particular template. And if I want to get access to the user in that template, I need to use this. It's, it's a Jinja, it's called Jinja 2 uh, uh, program, uh, programming or Jinja 2 uh, templates. So it's a it's something, yeah. So if I, if I check that please again, I check the freeze. You're going to see that when I installed Fla Flask, I also installed Ginger. Okay, so it's this language that made that possible for me to have that kind of interaction between Python and HTML. So it is Ginger 2. And this is how the Ginger 2 works. In fact, in the Ginger 2, there are certain things you can do. For instance, I can change this to uppercase, okay, inside Ginger 2 by doing this. Copy. That lies, I believe. Okay. So you can see in the thing I 